So in this video, we are going to make a custom footer for our website using Elementor's container widget. But today, we are not going to be using Elementor Pro. In this video, we're going to be using the plugin called Pro Elements to help us achieve the same thing that Elementor Pro would. And that plugin is free. So if you don't have the Pro Elements plugin yet, there's going to be a link above and there's going to be a link in the description below to a video where I show you how to get it and how to install it into your WordPress website. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now that you have Pro Elements installed in your system and you have the free version of Elementor running, it's time to build a custom footer for our website. Okay, so here in the back end of our WordPress website, in order to start building the custom footer, what we're going to do is we're going to go into templates and we're going to go into the theme builder. Okay, so now that the theme builder has been loaded up, now let's start building that footer. On the left hand side, you can see there's a whole bunch of different options that we can build for our website. What we're going to be concentrating today, obviously, is going to be the footer. So we're going to hover over the footer and you have the option to start creating from that plus button or you can click on it and on the top right you can say add new. So let's just do that now quick. Okay, so now that the Elementor web designer is loaded up, you can see that the library has popped up. Now remember that this is Pro Element and not Elementor Pro. So you won't have access to these template library of Elementor. That is actually part of their Pro version. So if you want all these templates, then you're going to have to go buy Elementor Pro. Because if you buy a license of Elementor Pro, then they give you access into all these template kits over here. So in this video, we are going to be custom making our footer from scratch. So all we're going to do is we're going to close this window. Okay, so now here in the designer, we're going to start off with our first container that's going to house everything of our footer so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus sign and then we're going to select what type of container we want to start building with now i know that i want two different sections here now i can choose this option over here that has the two containers already or you can actually start off with the main section and then you can add the containers within either way is the right way there is no wrong way of doing this so i'm just going to click on the one with the two containers so now that this container has been loaded up with the two containers inside you can see there's a whole bunch of settings on the left hand side if this isn't here, all you have to do is click on the six dot icon, and then the settings panel will come up on the left hand side here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change content width from boxed to full width. That's the way I'd like to do my design. If you prefer boxed, then keep it boxed in yours. Then I'm going to come down. I want to align all the items to the center of this one just to keep everything balanced there. It's fine on the direction over here. I do want these two containers to be horizontally. You do have the option to put it vertically and then you can see how they stack up. But in this design that I want to make over here, I'm going to keep it horizontal. Now that I'm happy with these settings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to style and I'm going to make sure that the background color is white. You do have the options of having images in that. In this tutorial, I'm not going to add that. I'm just going to keep it to the white background. And I'm pretty happy with all the settings I've done here on this container. In this container, what I'd like to have is contact information for my company and also want a contact form inside this section of the footer as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a form to one of these containers. So to do that, I'm going to click on this nine dot icon on the top here and it brings up all the widgets that you can choose to put into your footer. Now you can go and scroll through all these widgets or you can go to the top here and just say form. And here in the first result is the form widget. I'm going to take that, I'm going to drag it across, I'm going to let go inside this container. Okay, so now that the form widget has been put into place, it's time to change the settings here for this form. I'm happy with name, email, and message. If you want to add extra, it's pretty simple. All you have to say is click on item. You can say what type it is, say if it's a text, email, or whatever, and you give it a label. For this example, I'm just going to say that it's a text type, and I'm just going to say contact number. You can change the type to an actual number if you want to. You do have the option to say that these fields are required so that a customer can't just put in the submit button if a client can't leave some fields open, which you know generally is required information anyways. Another field that I want to have is the surname field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add item and then I'm going to keep it as text and then I'll put the label as surname. And obviously the placeholder is going to be surname as well. Again, you can say it's required or not required. And I think I'm going to be happy with the amount of fields that are going to be here inside this form. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag around these fields to the right position where I want them to be. So the surname, I'm going to put in underneath the name. Contact number, I'm going to put above email and underneath surname. I'm going to keep the message at the bottom. Okay, so now that I have the fields in the right order, I actually want them placed next to each other just to make the form a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on name. And on column width, I'm going to say that this is a 50%. On the surname as well, I'm going to say it's a 50%. Then you can see surname slides next to name. The contact number, I'm going to do the same thing, 50%. Email, same thing, 50%. And message, I'll just keep it as a default of 100%. Now you can see the form is now compacted into a nice little neat shape. What I like in my designs is I like to hide the labels of my fields. I actually just use the placeholders in the design. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to hide it. If you like having the labels, then obviously just keep them on. As for the button, I'm happy with it like this because I'm going to stylize it later. But the actual functionality of it, I'm fine with. Something that's very important to add is to come down to email 
and then you can say who these emails go to. So here you put your own email address where you want these forms to go to. And then you have a whole bunch of different options here as well. The replying to field, what I'd like to do over here is actually say the email field of the form itself. It's good practice because sometimes you might forget when you're pressing reply that it's not actually going to the person that's going somewhere else. So just make sure that the reply to is the email field. Okay, so now that we're happy with these settings, it's time to stylize this form. So in order to do that, we come up to style. So now we can start changing all the different design elements to actually make a professional looking form. I'm gonna leave the row gaps and column gaps. I'm happy with them as for now, but I can come back to it and tweak it later. The labels, I'm not worried because I've removed mine. What I'm interested in right now is I'm gonna go into the fields and I'm gonna stylize these things themselves. The text color I'm happy with, the typography, we can always make it whatever we'd like. I'm going to keep it as is. The background color, I'm happy with the white that is there right now. What I am actually going to do is I'm going to change the border. For the border, I'm going to select it as a black. I'm going to change the border width of this whole thing to make it as my own style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink all these variables. And I'm just going to concentrate on the bottom one here. I'm going to add three pixels to the bottom. So now you can see how it does that sort of look over there. What I'm not happy with is how it looks all rounded there. I just want straight lines. So in order to do that, under border radius, I'm going to make sure that this is selected as zero. So as zero, now you can see how these lines have just straightened out. It's now time to go over to the button and stylize that. So we click here onto the button menu, and now we can start changing everything that we need to here. For typography, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that. I'm going to change it from what it's setting is now. I'm going to change it to an 18. I'm going to make sure that it's uppercase, and I think that that's fine for this button over here. I'm going to close the typography. And I'm going to change the border type to a solid. I'm going to say that the border width is 3. And I'm going to start changing all the different design aspects of this as well. So the background color, I'm going to remove this completely. The text color, I'm going to make black. The border color over here, I'm going to make black as well. There is no previous button here. It's just a standard contact form. So I don't have to worry about a previous button because there's not going to be one. And then after that, I'm going to go over to hover. And I'm going to change all the settings here. Because as you can see that this design of hover, is just not going to work. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make the background color black. I'm going to make sure that... The text is white and the border color I'm going to keep it as black. I just like to make sure that the border color is always the same so just in case for whatever reason on different browsers there might be an error and then the hover effect just looks completely wrong. So I like to actually put in the colors on both sides. So now if I hover this is more of a design element that I like to go with this form. Okay so now that I'm happy with the contact form it's time to put contact details on the right hand side. So to do that I'm going to look for an icon box. So my next move is to go up to this 9.icon I'm going to click on that it's going to bring up all the widgets and I'm going to type an icon in the search field. Now it gives a list of all the different widgets with the icon in it and this is the one I'm looking for icon box. I'm going to click and drag and then let go of that inside this container on the right. Okay, so now that the icon box is in place, it's time to actually stylize this the way we want it to give all the contact information that I'd like to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the settings for this particular one. I don't want the star icon. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to look for a telephone. So I just have to type out phone. Here's all different type of phone icons. I'm going to select this one over here because I like that. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the heading here. I'm going to say contact number. And then in description, I'm going to actually give the phone number itself. Something that's really cool that you can do over here is you can see that there's a link option here so if someone clicks on it you can actually make this as a functional number so to do that i'm just going to copy the same number i'm going to go over to link i'm going to use the word called tell so it's t-e-l with a colon and i'm going to paste the number and then i'm going to make sure that there's no spaces so every time someone clicks on this it's actually going to link into that number itself it's going to do an automatic call now that i'm happy with the actual settings it's time to stylize this so we're going to go over to style the next thing we do is going to move this whole position of the icon box so i want the icon to be on the left hand side like so i want the alignment as is it's all fine i'm going to click on the icon and i'm going to start changing the settings of this so i want mine to be black make the size a lot bigger so i'm going to leave it as a 30 for now then i can always come back and tweak it later once i've done the style settings for the actual text to this box so I'm going to click on content and let's start changing the text options here. I'm going to make the color of the title black as well. I'm going to change the typography. I want this to be, say, a 30. I want it to be uppercase and I want it to be a little bit thinner. Then I'm going to go down to the description, which in this case is going to be the contact number. And I see I'm pretty happy with the style of this. So all I'm going to do is going to move it up closer to the contact number. So to do that, all I have to do is click on this title space. I'm going to make sure that's like a zero. Now, as you can see, as I slide it up, you can see it moves away. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it as zero. Now that I'm finished with all the settings of the text, I'm going to go back up into box. I'm going to make sure that the alignment here is going to be in the middle now. Because in this design, it just will look better in the middle. And I'm going to make the icon just a little bit bigger. So instead of 30, I'm going to say it's a 40. Another thing you can do is actually move the text away from the icon if you want. So here under spacing, you can just move it up. And then you can see how the text moves away from the icon. 
or you can move it completely down and it puts it right next to the icon but i'm pretty happy with where it is at 15 so i'm just going to leave it as this and i think that's pretty much the style that i'm going to go for for this example okay so now that we're happy with how this widget looks like i'm going to duplicate this and then i'm going to change just the information about it i'm going to keep all the style settings in place so to do that i'm going to right click on this i'm going to say duplicate now you can see now there's two of them so all i have to do is on the second one is change the details but all the styling is going to stay the same so this one i want it to be the email address so i'm going to click on the icon i'm going to change this to the envelope that represents an email and here we go i like this first one i'm going to say insert and then the title i'm going to change this to email address and then the description is obviously going to be the email address and just like the number if you want to have this linked there is a setting under link that you can add so let's do that now so i'm going to copy the email address and here under link i'm going to take out this i'm going to say mail to with a colon then i'm going to paste the email address that i want this widget to link to so every time they click on it, it'll auto pop up an email with our address already populated in the email form now that i'm happy with that i'm going to add the address of this company but i'm going to want it on top of all these widgets so i'm going to duplicate this bottom one for now i'm going to fill in all the details of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the icon i'm going to say that i want this as a map pin i'm going to say that one i'm going to say insert i'm going to say the title is going to be the address and the description is obviously the address of this company you do have the option of putting a link here to google maps as a map pin but you don't really want to do that because you want to keep the client within your website so what i'm going to do over here as a link i'm just going to remove it completely and i'm going to be putting a google map widget here anyway so it doesn't really matter for that so now like i had said earlier is i want this widget to be above the others so i'm going to click on this pencil icon and i'm just going to drag it until it's above the contact number i'm going to let go and then above all of this i'm going to put in the google maps widget so to go find it i'm going to click on this nine dot icon on the top again I'm going to say Google. Yeah, it says the Google Maps. I'm going to click and drag that until it's above the address. I'm going to let go. And once it's loaded, all you have to do is put in the address in the location and it's going to give the map pin there. Once you've put in the location, you can change the zoom and the height of this, but I'm actually quite happy with the way it looks right now. So now that I'm happy with all these details and everything of this footer as it's looking right now, another thing I want to add is another heading here above the contact form. So I'm going to click on the nine dot icon. I'm going to find the heading. I'm going to click and drag that until it's above the contact form. I'm going to let go. Here for the title, I'm going to change this to say contact us. I'm happy with the styling and everything of that. But I do want some space here in between the contact us and the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the nine dot icon again. I'm going to look for something called a spacer. I'm going to click and drag that. And I'm going to put that in between the heading and the contact form. I'm going to let that go over there and I'm pretty happy with how that looks right now. So now that I'm happy with this whole section, I'm going to add another section at the bottom with a little bit of copyright disclaimer and as well as all the social icons. So to do that, I'm going to click on this plus sign over here. I'm going to add the to container option over here again. And this one as well, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the settings of this. I'm going to say that this is a full width and I want everything aligned in the center just like I had done with the containers before. So now on the right hand side, I want the social icons over here. So I'm going to click on the nine dot icon. I'm going to type out social and here you can see that the social icons widget is here. I'm going to click and drag that across and I'm going to put it into the right position and I'm going to let go. Yeah, so now you can see you have a whole bunch of different options that you can use. So if you have a Facebook page that you want to put in over here, you click on Facebook, you'd paste the URL of your Facebook page and then you do the same thing for Twitter over here. If you have a YouTube channel, you'd put the URL of that over here. If you don't have YouTube in your design, you can just click the X and you can take out YouTube completely. Maybe you want to add something like say TikTok. So what you do is say click add item. Here you change the icon and here and filter by name you'd say tiktok once you see the tiktok icon you say insert then you can put the url of tiktok here into your social icon another one that you might want is your instagram so you'd click on item here under icon you click on that in the filter you'd say instagram then you select the instagram icon over here you'd say insert and same as all the other widgets you'd add your instagram page here under the link now that we're happy with all the social media options that we've loaded into this widget it's time to actually stylize it out a bit more so what i'd like to do is have the alignment on the right hand side I'm going to go over to style and I'm going to stylize all these different widgets to look the same as the rest of the footer. Here under color, I'm going to change this to custom. And the primary color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this completely away. I'm going to make it transparent. So what that does is this blue over here on Facebook, as you can see there, it will remove that color of this box over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stylize the centers. So the primary color, we're going to make sure that this is 100% transparent. You can see the icons disappear. And then the secondary color is I want this black and now you can see how it looks like and it fits more to the feel of the rest of the footer. The size of this I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I think a 35 is fine for this footer. 
and you can see that all these things are displayed quite nicely another really cool thing you can do is you can go to hover effects and you can choose whatever effect that you want i do like the grow one so when you hover over these social icons it grows just a little bit that's actually quite a nice touch that i like to add and the last thing i'm going to add to this whole footer is the copyright the cool thing we're going to do with the copyright to this footer is it's going to auto populate the year for us so you never have to change the year or remember to change the year in your copyright information it'll always do it for you so to do that we're going to go up into this nine dot icon and we're going to select the text editor here we're going to take this we're going to drag it and we're going to let go into this container on the left hand side here in the settings of this container we're going to take out all this text over here and what we're going to be looking for is actually this little icon over here that says dynamic tags we're going to click on that and then you can see in this drop down there's a whole bunch of different options that you can actually auto populate the one that we are looking for is current date and time and that's going to be underneath the site settings we're going to click on that now you can see that this text editor has changed a bit and also what you can see is now here is the exact time and date of when i was filming this video so let's change how this is presented and we're going to say copyright and because we don't want to have the date and time we actually want to have just the year and say copyright so to do that we're going to go into this wrench icon it's this very small little thing right in front of current date time we're going to click on that and you can see there's a whole bunch of different settings that we can change over here so date format i want this to be custom because i only want the year so to do that we're going to go to custom and i'm going to highlight all this and replace it with a capital y and you can see that now it's just saying 2024 then after that we're going to click on advanced and here you can put text or numbers whatever you want before and after the automatic population so what we want over here is to say copyright with the copyright symbol and if you don't know how to get the copyright symbol all you have to do is go into Google and type out copyright symbol. It'll give you in the search results the copyright symbol. And all you do is select that, copy it, and paste it here in the before section. Okay, so now that I typed out copyright and I put in the symbol, you can see that the symbol is right next to the year. I don't want that. I want a space in between. So behind the copyright symbol, all I have to do is press a space. And now you can see that it's spaced out a bit more evenly. So now we've done with all the settings, actually time to stylize this a little bit more. I want this more into the center of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into style. I'm going to say the alignment is going to be center. Here you do have the options to stylize the color and the typography and if you want to add a text shadow and all the other normal things that are associated with the text editor. But I'm actually pretty happy with this whole sort of design and how it looks. So I'm going to actually publish this now. So to do that, we'd head over to publish and you can see the publish settings pop up. So here we have the options of display condition. Now I'm actually going to have this footer for the entire site. So we're going to say add condition and we can say include entire site. So for whatever reason, if you don't want this footer to be displayed anywhere, say like at the bottom of a blog post, you can say add another condition, exclude, and under the entire site, you choose singular. Under all singulars, you could say posts. You do have the option of pages or anything else. And you can say all posts or particular posts, or anything else like that. So you can exclude this and actually replace this footer with another custom one that you could make. But in this example, we don't need to do that. So I'm going to click X and let's say save and close. And there we go. This new custom footer has been published to our website. So if you go into front end, you're going to see this footer in action. Okay, so now that my website front end is loaded, I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and let's go see our footer now in action. And here's the footer that we had made now working on our website. Okay, and that's how to make a custom footer for our website without using Elementor Pro. This is the same process as Elementor Pro in making the footer, but we are using a free plugin of Pro Elements, so it's a win for us to get to the same results. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, then just put a comment down below and let me see what I can do. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that stuff helps my channel a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.